ever noticed how a hot air balloon rises high into the sky? This happens because of a simple yet fascinating phenomenon. Welcome to Learn with Miral, where we unravel the mysteries of science in a fun way. Today, let's talk about density. Imagine a room full of people. If more people squeeze into the same room, it becomes denser. Similarly, density is a measure of how much mass is packed into a given volume. When it comes to air, warm air molecules are like party goers. They move faster and spread out, thereby reducing the air's density. On the other hand, cold air molecules are more like a quiet study group. They move slower and stay closer together, making the air denser. So, in essence, hot air is less dense than cold air, but what does this mean? Let's find out in the next scene. Have you ever wondered why some things float while others sink? This is where buoyancy comes into play. Buoyancy can be defined as the upward force exerted on an object by a fluid such as air. It's like a gentle nudge from below that helps things stay afloat. Now remember when we talked about hot air being less dense than cold air? This difference in density plays a big role in buoyancy. The less dense hot air experiences a larger buoyant force than the denser cold air. It's almost as if the air is saying, Hey, you're light! Up you go! This difference in force causes the warm air to rise and displace the cooler air, forming what we call a convection current. It's like a never-ending relay race, with warm air passing the baton to the cool air. So, buoyancy is the secret behind why hot air rises and cold air sinks. But wait! There are a few misconceptions that we need to address. It's time to bust some myths about hot and cold air. You might have heard that hot air is lighter than cold air. Well, this is a common misconception. It's not about weight, but density that affects buoyancy. When air is heated, the molecules move faster and spread out, making it less dense than cooler air. But it doesn't mean that hot air is lighter. It's just that the denser cold air tends to sink and the less dense hot air rises. Another myth is that hot air expands. What actually happens is that the molecules in the air move quicker and take up more space when they're hot. This might seem like expansion, but it's not. The molecules themselves don't get bigger. They just move around more. Remember, it's not about weight, but density that affects buoyancy. And air molecules move faster and take up more space when they're hot, but they don't truly expand. Now that we've cleared up some misconceptions, let's explore why convection matters in our daily lives. You see, convection plays a key role in weather patterns. Warm air rises, creating low-pressure areas. Cooler air rushes in to fill these areas, forming winds. This constant exchange of warm and cool air is what shapes our climate, but it doesn't stop there. Convection is also the reason why your home feels cozy in winter. Have you ever noticed how heaters are often placed at the bottom of a room? Well, that's because the warm air rises, spreading heat throughout the room. And let's not forget about sea breezes. During the day, land heats up faster than the ocean. The warm air over the land rises, and the cooler air from the ocean rushes in to replace it, creating a lovely sea breeze. From the wind on your face to the warmth in your home, convection is at work all around us. Isn't science amazing? Before we wrap up, here's an interesting fact for you. Did you know that the incredible spectacle of a volcanic eruption relies heavily on convection currents? Now, that's something to ponder about. Volcanoes, as we know, are openings in the Earth's crust from which molten rock, debris, and gases erupt. At the heart of this explosive event is the movement of hot and cold air or in this case, hot molten rock and cooler surrounding material. When a volcano erupts, it spews out hot ash, gas, and molten rock, which we call magma. Now this magma is significantly hotter than the surrounding rocks and air. Just like the hot air we've been talking about, these hot materials are less dense than their cooler surroundings. Remember how we said that less dense materials experience a greater buoyant force? Well, the same principle applies here. The hot, less dense magma experiences a greater buoyant force than the cooler, denser surrounding rocks and air. This causes the magma to rise, breaking through the Earth's crust and erupting from the volcano. But that's not all. Once the hot materials are ejected into the air, they don't just fall back down immediately. The hot ash and gases rise high into the atmosphere, 
carried by powerful convection currents. These convection currents can even influence weather patterns and climate, often resulting in thunderstorms around volcanic eruptions. So, the next time you see footage of a volcanic eruption, remember that it's not just a display of Mother Nature's fury, but also a grand demonstration of the principles of density, buoyancy, and convection in action. So there you have it. Hot air rises and cold air sinks due to differences in density and buoyancy. This simple yet profound principle has wide-ranging implications, from the gentle breeze at the beach to the explosive power of a volcanic eruption. But don't just take our word for it. Look around you and see if you can spot convection in action. Maybe it's the way smoke rises from a candle, or perhaps it's the way your hot coffee cools down by transferring its heat to the surrounding air. The examples are endless, and the more you look, the more you'll see that convection is an integral part of our lives. Thank you for joining us on Learn With Morale today. We hope you enjoyed our exploration of why hot air rises and cold air sinks. We've covered a lot of ground from the basic principles of density and buoyancy to the fascinating role of convection in volcanic eruptions. But remember, this is just the tip of the iceberg. There's a whole world of science waiting to be discovered.